What's up guys, it's Kyle here, and in this week's video, we're going to be making a 6 sensor line follower for the EV3. I've already made a 2 sensor line follower video, and apparently that wasn't enough for you guys, so I moved on to 3 sensors, that wasn't enough, I did 4 sensors, then a few weeks ago I did 5 sensors, and you guys still wanted more. So now here it is, we're making a mega OP EV3 line follower that uses six color sensors to line follow, which is just insane. So this is this is going to be a good time. I mean, really, it's just a meme at this point. Nobody needs this, but let's just have a good time and make a crazy line follower with six sensors. Obviously, the first problem that we're going to run into when making this line follower is that the EV3 brick only has four sensor ports on it. So to accommodate all six color sensors at once, I'm going to be using two mind sensor sensor multiplexers and that'll enable me to attach and use all six color sensors at one time. Of course you're going to need to know how to program these multiplexers and I already have a tutorial on that so go watch the tutorial to see how to program those multiplexers before you proceed. The idea for a PID line follower with multiple sensors came from a viewer on my channel who left this comment on one of my previous line following videos and he outlines in detail how to make a PID line follower with any amount of sensors. So today I'm going to be putting his idea to the test and pushing it to the limits to see just how well it works. This is a really awesome idea and I also explored in last week's video how to make a two sensor PID line follower. So if you haven't seen that video already, I recommend that you go check that out too. Here is the hardware configuration for my six sensor line follower. I started with my base Sirius robot, then added the six sensors in front of the robot in a pyramid shape. I used two mind sensors sensor multiplexers. Now the wiring can get kind of confusing, but the front left sensor is in port 1, the front right sensor is in port 2. Then in port 3 we have one of the sensor multiplexers. In channel 2 of port 3 we have the middle left sensor, and then in channel 3 of port 3 we have the extreme left or emergency sensor. Then in port 4 we have the second sensor multiplexer. In channel 2 of port 4 is the middle right sensor, and in channel 3 of port 4 is the extreme right or emergency sensor. A quick rundown of how this line follower works is the front two sensors and the middle two sensors work together as a four sensor PID system, and then the two sensors in the back act as emergency sensors, so when they sense the black line the robot knows to make a tight turn. So technically this is just a four sensor PID line follower with two extra emergency sensors to help it out when necessary. Now with the four sensors in the front, the front two work as a standard two sensor PID line follower like I demoed in last week's video, and then the middle two sensors that are just behind them are also a two sensor system, but they're multiplied by a priority constant so they have a larger effect over the corrections in the front two sensors. The rationale behind this is that if the middle two sensors see the black line, because they're further out, that means the robot is starting to stray a lot from the line and it needs a sharper correction to bring it back onto the desired path. Now that we've established all that, we can get right into the programming. What I have here is the single sensor PID line following program that I taught you how to make in a previous video. Since we're going to be starting with a single sensor program and converting it into the six sensor program, I recommend that if you haven't already, you go see my video on the single sensor video right now and learn how to make that program. Then once you have that ready, we can work to convert this into the six sensor program. And I'll put the link to that single sensor video up here. If you do have your single sensor program ready to go, now we can start to convert it. The first step in converting is to remove this target variable here and here because we don't need a target light intensity. Each pair of sensors compares its light intensity against the other as opposed to comparing it directly to a target light value. The next step then is to start changing the way that the line follower calculates the error. And we're going to use all four of those front sensors, so the front pair and the middle pair, to calculate the error for the PID algorithm. So we're going to go into the mind sensors sensor multiplexer programming block here and drag that out. If you'd like to learn more about programming the sensor multiplexer, I have a video on that that I recommend you go check out too if you're unfamiliar with it. But we're going to start with the left side, so that's the port 1 sensor and the port 3 multiplexer. And we're going to choose channel 2 and set it to measure 
reflected light intensity on the color sensor. Then we're going to take this reflected light intensity and multiply it by a priority constant. So take out a math block, set it to multiplication, and you can plug in this reflected light intensity as one of the inputs of the math block. And then for the constant, I found that 1.5 works best. And then we can uh, take this result, which is the error calculated by the middle left sensor. This is the error calculated by the middle right sensor, and we need to combine the two. And to do that, we'll take out another math block, set it to addition. Take the reflected light intensity measured by the front left sensor and the multiplied reflected light intensity from the middle left sensor and add the two together. Then we're going to take the result and put that as the first input in the subtraction block. So this is the setup for the left two sensors. Now we need to do something similar for the right two sensors. So take out another mind sensors sensor multiplexer block and insert it right there. Switch it to port 4 because we're dealing with the right side now. And we're going to choose channel 2. And then change the mode to measure reflected light intensity. Then take out another math block. Set it to multiply by the same priority constant we set before. So 1.5 insert the reflected light intensity from the multiplexer sensor in there and we're also going to take out another standard color sensor block and that's going to be our color sensor in port 2 which is our front right sensor so change that to measure reflected light intensity now we have the error calculated by the middle right sensor and by the middle front sensor we need to combine the two again with an addition math block so I'll scroll over here we can take this one and then add it to here. Now we have the, ca the error calculated by the right pair of sensors and we're going to take this result here and plug it in as the second input of the subtraction block. So here we're calculating the error for the left two sensors, that's front and middle, we and then we have the error calculated by the right two sensors, that's also front and middle, and then we subtract left error minus right error and then that becomes the actual error that the PID uses in its algorithm later on. This is how you make a simple four sensor PID algorithm, all, although I guess it's really not that simple. Now we're going to keep chugging along with the programming because we still have two more sensors to program. So now we're going to scroll all the way to the end of this long algorithm right after where you see the error and the last error operation happening and we're going to now program the two emergency sensors so we're, these are going to be programmed with switch blocks so take out the first switch and go over to the sensor multiplexer and select compare reflected light intensity we're going to program the left emergency sensor first which is in port 3 and then in channel 3 and we're going to set the target reflected light intensity as less than 20% you can adjust this reflected light intensity based on the brightness conditions of your specific mat and room, but that's what's working for me. And then in the false case, we can also put a switch for the right emergency sensor, so I'll insert that there. Again, go to the multiplexer, go to compare, reflected light intensity. This one is in port 4 for the right side, also in channel 3. And then we're going to set this to 20% as well. So now we need to program the, the turn the robot has to make, and this is a sharp turn that it executes when the emergency sensor sees the black line. Here we're going to be programming the turn that ex executes when the extreme left sensor sees the black line. So we're going to take out a loop block, and we're going to set this to color sensor, reflected light intensity, for sensor 1. So this turn is going to repeat until the left front sensor sees the black line and that'll be about 25 percent which is a little bit higher than the ones that we did here because we don't want it exactly on the black line we want it to stop just before it reaches the black line and then to program the actual turn we'll take out a move tank block set this to on and then we'll put the left wheel at 10 percent power and the right wheel at negative 25 percent power and so that'll be a, a sharp left turn and it's left because negative power makes my serious robot drive forward then for the other direction turn we're going to do something pretty similar take out another loop block set this to color sensor reflected light intensity this time for the sensor in port 2 but it's also going to be less than 25 percent reflected light intensity and then you can take another move tank block and set it to on and then set up the power to drive in the opposite direction as the turn above so negative 25 percent power and then positive 10 on the right wheel 
This is the completed programming for the six sensor line follower. Now let's talk about K values. So we're back at the beginning of the program to check out these K values. K values are always really annoying to calibrate and it takes a lot of time, but now it's especially annoying because we're dealing with four sensors in our PID algorithm. I covered how to adjust the K values in previous videos, so go check those out if you haven't already. But the K values that I eventually settled on were a KP value of 0.2, a KI value of 0.012 and then a KD value of 0.2. Let's see how well our six sensor line follower performs. Alright, so closing remarks on this six sensor line follower. Truth be told, it's really not all that good of a line follower. I'm definitely seeing diminishing returns in the line following, especially after my two sensor PID and my three sensor line follower. This six, or six sensor line follower is definitely not that good. It failed about half the time that I tried to record it for the video, like going off the line, losing the line a lot. So it's really not a good design. The only purpose of the six sensor line follower is just a cool thing to try and show you guys and it definitely demonstrates the principle of diminishing returns and shows how you can't keep throwing more hardware at a problem to solve it. Sometimes you just need to use a smaller amount of hardware that you already have and uh, work to make that hardware more intelligent so you can use its data more effectively. Now this uh, program of course isn't even practical. I mean I don't know of anyone who's gonna have six sensors and two multiplexers laying around. I mean I certainly didn't. I'm getting to the point where I have to start borrowing color sensors from my friends for these videos. Also some people might bring up that it's kind of cheating that technically I made a four sensor PID line follower that uses those two emergency sensors to help it out and yeah it's cheating but then again why do you even need more than two sensors for a PID anyway that's ridiculous in the first place and the reason why I use the outer two sensors as emergency sensors because they're so wide that they don't even see the line they're seeing the other nonsense on the the background of the line anyway so that's that's enough rambling so yeah this line follower is really does not have good performance and it's not at all practical but it's this is like I said this is pretty much a meme on my channel at this point and this was just a fun challenge to see what we're capable of in terms of how many sensors we could possibly use for a line follower and six is where we draw the line and say that's enough because the performance is definitely decreasing as more sensors are being added Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, click here to check out my new book. It's called Building Smart LEGO Mindstorm PV3 Robots, and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, drop your suggestion in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.